Lizzie, how you doing? I'm like, what the heck is going on? So I am at the animal shelter right now picking up a third foster cat. I am excited and my mom has, I actually am fostering this cat because my mom was interested in adopting a cat. So I was like, well, I can foster it and see if it's like a sweet kind cat that you'd want. Um, so hopefully she is a sweetie pie. Her name is Cassie. So she will be out here in a little bit. So one of the volunteers or workers here at the shelter just came out with a cat and was just like, um, she's just like, hold on a second. The cat just got spaded recently and I just noticed like a lump on her like chest area. So she went and took the cat to see the vet really quickly. So hopefully I won't be here too much longer. Um, but yeah, so I wonder what that is about. Hopefully this doesn't stop me from getting the cat today. But of course I want the cat to be healthy and okay before I take it home. So then I won't be at home and something is wrong with the cat and I'm gonna have to drive all the way back here and be like in a panic. So hopefully the cat is fine. Hey cat's here. Little Miss Cassie's here. Hi Cassie, how you doing? You look cute. All right, y'all, here we go with the foster cat routine. Starting off in the bathroom, I'm gonna let her out. She seems super friendly. She was so cute. Her meow was cute. I stuck my little, I stuck my fingers through the little holes in the cage and she was like rubbing up against them. So Cassie seems super cute. All right, baby girl. Come on out. She's tiny. She's two years old. Wow, she's so tiny. Can I pet you? Oh yeah, yeah. She's tiny, you guys. So this is a thing that she had to see the vet for. Um, they said that she recently had like a litter of kittens and she was spayed, spayed? Yeah, she was spayed. So she has like that thing hanging. Uh, but they said that was okay and it will go away soon. You're a mama. I didn't know you were a mom. She's so skinny. Look, she's. That's your litter box. Do you gotta go potty? Morning, Cassie. Good morning, I just got to work. It is about 6, 10 and I am in the GI room today. So I'll be doing a bunch of colonoscopies and a bunch of endoscopies. This morning I was jamming out to Beyonce in honor of her new album coming out soon. And I heard, rumor has it that it's like a dance album. So I'm really excited about that. GI case I am not doing just because it's conscious sedation so I'm doing what I always do eat my yogurt my half off yogurt it's kind of sour that's why it's 50% off probably so I'm still kind of sitting waiting so my first two cases in the GI room <laughs> choking on some animal crackers but the first two cases in the GI room were conscious sedation so the nurse did them and then um, so I've just kind of been sitting waiting I gave one of my co-workers a break and yeah it's like almost eight o'clock and I still haven't done anything yet except draw up drugs and sit in my room <laughs> but that's sometimes how it goes so right now I'm in my bedroom I'm sitting on the floor and trying to come up with solutions. So basically, the cat that I'm fostering right now is so sweet, so nice, loves cuddling, is pleasant overall, but she has a flaw that is not good. So this is my closet. Bloop. I have all my clothes. You, you don't know why all my clothes are kind of hung up like that, all weird. Anyway. And you'll also find out why I have aluminum all on the floor. So the cat I've been fostering has been pooing in the closet, specifically right here and right here. 
So I laid down aluminum foil as a deterrent. So yeah, that's why the aluminum foil is all on the ground like that as a deterrent. Hopefully it will keep her from going in the closet and pooing. And I have no idea why she's pooing in the closet, you guys. So when I first got her, I <laughs> thought she was constipated. Like literally, she hadn't pooed. At least I didn't think she had pooed in like three days. And I was getting worried. I was like, is she scared? is she constipated is something going on so i actually called up the animal um shelter and let them know i was like hey this cat hasn't pooped since i got her i'm worried and i had looked all around for poo i'd looked under the bed i had looked under my dresser i was like looking all around i couldn't smell anything i was like i literally think she's constipated anyway that night after i'd called the animal shelter i was in my closet and i was like <laughs> She pooed in my closet. She pooed in my closet. And I found like two glo not globs, two, <laughs> two massive things of cat poo on one of my sweaters. And I was like, oh, I'm glad that you're not constipated, but this is disgusting. So I like cleaned it all up. And I was like, I'm going to not allow her in my room anymore. I'm just going to keep her in the living room, in the bathroom and put the litter box in the bathroom. So she literally is like kind of forced to go in the bathroom, hopefully. So she did fine for a week. She was going in the litter box fine doing really well so i said you know what you've been a good girl i think you are done pooing in the closet i think you've got past that i think you're kind of more relaxed and feel more secure so i'm going to let you in my bedroom not even 24 hours later she was pooing in the closet again and i said now i know it's not about nervousness like i thought now i know it's not about anxiety necessarily this is a choice you're making intentionally. So again, cleaned it all up. And I said, I'm not letting her in the bedroom anymore. Anymore. This is done. She has something with my closet that is making her want to poo in my closet. I'm, I'm not letting her in my bedroom anymore. So today, I don't know what happened. Maybe I left my door open or something and she snuck in and went poo and snuck back out. Because I literally didn't see her in the bedroom at all. I keep the doors closed. And she pooed again in my closet. So this is like the third incidence of her pooing in the closet. I'm like, what the heck is going on? I clean out the litter box every day. I have it in a spot where she can see where it's at. Like, I don't know what to do. So I'm thinking I'm going to get a whole new litter box. And I'm trying to think of where else I can put it. Because I really don't want it near the kitchen. And the kitchen's connected to the living room. And I don't, I don't want to be smelling poo all the time. I don't know what to do, y'all. So I'm literally, I'm about to go and get a new litter box and I'll probably get new litter and try to have a fresh start with her. That's why I put the aluminum foil down as a deterrent so she won't even wanna go in the closet. Hopefully she doesn't go somewhere else because she doesn't go in the closet. Because I, I literally don't know what to do. I literally don't wanna know what to do. And I'm trying to fix her before she gets adopted or if someone puts an adoption request because if they have like this thing where you can foster them for 14 days like whoever wants to possibly adopt they can kind of like do a trial run with the cat and if she does this with a, a potential adopter they're gonna be like ew i don't want a cat that's pooing outside of the litter box and she's two years old it's not like she's a baby like she should know better <sighs> so i'm gonna try these things hopefully we can get it together because like she's an awesome cat but pooing in the closet is nasty and I don't like it either. Vlog today, it is Wednesday, I'm off work. It has been an interesting week because Tuesday the surgery center um, just like was closed so no nobody had to go into work. And then today was Wednesday and I am first out and there wasn't a lot of cases today so I didn't have to go in. So I've literally not been in work barely any <laughs> this week. But right now, someone just walked by, so I bring the camera down. But right now, I'm about to go in to this massage place and get a massage. I don't know. I had the day off, and I was like, why does well get a massage done? Like, why not? I don't know. Every time I get a massage, it's always, like, a little bit awkward going in because I'm just like, I'm about to be so exposed. But it's it's nice when I'm getting it done, just, like, the build up to, like, getting a massage. I don't know. It's, it's kind of weird. I'm kind of weird about it, but it should be a good old time. it is thursday and it is my birthday it's july 7th so i'm doing some extra special things to make my day better before going to work i'm making myself a little strawberry date vanilla soy milk smoothie 
um, just so I can have that later, something special that I like. And then, I don't really think I'm doing anything else. Oh, I'm bringing a little poppy. You know, just little sweet things for myself to enjoy while I'm at work. Today in the OR, I was doing anesthesia for a hip arthroscopy. We have the C-arm in the room to do x-ray. The patient is intubated with an ET tube for the procedure. And the surgery is about two and a half hours long. So we have really soft cushion and the patient lays on it the whole procedure. It's really soft. I like playing with it. <laughs> do the same thing. <laughs> so today has been a pretty long day for me. I'm just getting home. I did not have any idea that this day was going to be so long. So I went to check out a wedding venue with my friends, Boomy and Lauren, and the wedding venue was okay. Well, no, actually it was nice. It was a nice wedding venue, but compared to um, one of the other wedding venues we checked out that had like an all-inclusive package and just so much more included in the whole deal, it just, it just didn't compare. Like it just was, the price of the venue pretty much was the price of the all-inclusive package with like food, a florist, um de decoration so overall just didn't compare but after we checked out the wedding venue it was kind of nice because it kind of solidified the venue that we had already been thinking we really liked and wanted to have a wedding at so that was kind of nice to get that solidification if that is a word and then after that we went to Pond City Market and we ate at a restaurant called Atrium and not only was it aesthetically pleasing the food was actually pretty good and the cocktails we got were pretty good. So I was happy about that. So it's kind of loud in here, but we just checked out a wedding venue and now we're getting, <laughs> sorry, I'm like interrupting you. And now we're getting lunch at this place called the Atrium, which is really cute. We're really excited. And then Lauren's over here. Yeah, it's very 50s. This place is very cute and we just talked about how it's literally all girls and their friends. Like everybody looks really cute in dresses. So that place was pretty good. We definitely go there again. And we said we're gonna get dressed up cute the next time we go because there were so many girl group like groups of girls there. Um, hanging out with the friends, getting brunch, and they all look so cute. And we was like, yeah, we're gonna step up our game next time and look really cute as well. But it was super cute. And it was like, no, it was maybe like three or four couples there, but most of it was like Gen Z and millennial girls hanging out with the friends on Saturday, getting brunch, which was, <laughs> it was really cute. Um, so check that out if you live in Atlanta. Then we just walked around the Beltline for a little bit and just talked. There's a little cat sanctuary out here. It's a nice way of putting it. Hi, Boo Boo. Hi. Take him home. Cats everywhere. This is my paradise. They look young, too. And the uh, apartment complex allows people to just come and feed them. I don't know who, who owns this piece right here. It's like. You're cute. You're cute and tiny. There's like a whole setup for the cats. Dang, there's like literally somebody. It smells so bad. I know, we're probably stepping in poop right now. It smells so bad. We're stepping in poo. Um me and Lauren are both engaged. Like she literally got engaged three weeks to a month after I did. So it's very nice being able to talk to her about wedding planning and just like the excitement of being engaged and just having someone to relate to like the whole process and talk about and share our thoughts and feelings. So we literally talked for hours just about like our dreams and how we want our wedding to be and just like future and like money and finances and buying a home just we covered all the bases today um but i just got back recently it's nine o'clock so i've been gone from about 11 to 9 and my feet are killing me but um yeah that's pretty much it so yeah the wedding planning is going really well it's not stressful 
Steve, my fiance, is very involved in it. He is like looking up our photographer and he looked up the little um, wedding invitations that we're gonna send out. So he's planning that. He's been helping with the venues and sending emails. And I'm very thankful for it because I know I've definitely heard of like women whose husbands didn't help at all and they were just kind of left to deal with everything. So I love that he's very involved and wants to be involved and it's like a team effort. So I'm like, this is a good sign for the future. We're a team. <laughs> so that that is very good. I knew he was going to be like that. That's how he's always been in our relationship. It's always been a team effort, which I really appreciate. Um, the rest of the night I'm going to read because I have my book club, me and Boomy and Chloe, who is my friend. Chloe's my friend who lives, our friend, Chloe's our friend who lives in Dubai. And we do like a book club and talk like pretty much every Sunday or every other Sunday. We just like talking, I'll catch up, which is really nice. So I need to read the book we are reading because I haven't read anything for the book club and it's probably like 40 pages that I need to read tonight. So we will see how that goes, but I will get it done.